All right, guys, this is going to be Maf- Mafiaism Part 2. This is going to be the last part of Mafiaism. And even though I'm going to make two more ism videos, which teaches you how to make money just through girls, just through girls' pictures. And, um, and basically, I'll teach you more about Mafiaism and Panning, the essence of Mafiaism and Panning. And I'll also give you a deep, bit of detail on internet panning, which is also really good, but none of you guys get street panning. Oh, hold on, guys, let's get small here right now and go on. Here we go, guys. I'm lost off. Actually, better than talking about it. I'm going to read the actual list, like the actual master, master level, master level mafiaism, aka master level, ma- master level money, money, master level money collecting. So the way they're going to be similar to the family, but it's also nothing related to family. It's a way higher level than family. Are you waiting more money? So yeah, I'm going to read. The only reason I'm going to read this, put it on YouTube, is for a simple fact that right now, yeah, I, right now I have like, let me see, let me see, uh. Sasuke, A.K. Cosmic, Robert, and Kimo. Uh, so I got three other guys right now, and I might have my homegirl Robin being in too. And I saw my sort of fake, I saw my like half, half fake, A.K. fake girlfriend, Fallen A.K. Angel today. And she gave me a nice big hug. I was trying to chill with her, but I only had a dime. So I want to see, I want to go outside right now, and I'm going to fucking see what I can get with her. Because I don't think I'm going to share anyways. Uh, yeah, you guys know, guys. Monsters and mafiaism. So here's what I'm gonna read right now. I, if you do this, I recommend you. At first, I recommend I'm gonna read it, and then I'm gonna tell you more things I'll do this right. And how I would do it, I, I would do it, and I do everything I want to do it. But I'll be honest, at this point right now, the way I've been ever since, ever since I almost died from that piece of shit motherfucker who almost who, 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 who killed me for a twenty dollar fucking tablet that phone, which you can fucking get anywhere in the fucking Fordham, or you can bring twenty dollars and do that. And he was so fucking broken, but like that he rather just fucking tried and literally kill me. After I fucking blessed him with my crack. I gave him a crack like three times. And then like, and then like, like the first time I gave him like half a, half a dime the first time. That's right? Then the second time he gives me three dollars. And so, and then I, and then I get another one. But they only give me two dollars. So I was him, I was blessing him and giving him like four dollars of a crack. But she only gave him two dollars of a crack. Right? And then pretty much, um, did I buy a monster? This is a monster shit he's on me. Pretty much. We see said the other day that he has seven or eight and then, and then he will go buy my crack for right now, right? So yeah, so I get up and shit, right? And he's, and he's standing on the wall chilling, right? So I'm, I'm standing, I was talking about my first love, Tiger. I was talking about, like, on my Instagram right now and I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show how she looks. So while I'm looking, while I'm on my tablet, looking for that, this motherfucker gave me a crazy ass fucking chokehold out of nowhere. Like, out of fucking nowhere. I wasn't speaking at all. Like, I couldn't breathe in anything. And he was dead for like, he did for like, eight, like five to ten minutes. Cause in the beginning, I didn't resist at all. Just because I don't even know what was happening. Like, the second he did, I feel like I kind of blanked out and I forgot everything. Like, I forgot my name. I forgot who I was, why I was, what the world was and everything. I was really just in the moment completely. Like, that was the first time. I was, just, I mean, not the first. Cause I felt one into LSD. And I also felt what one into that went manic, manic on um, bipolar. But we'll talk about that later. So yeah. So that was the second, the second or third time that I experienced oneness and God and what God truly means and means. And then from there, after I experienced that, I started think, I, I was able to think again and say, Oh my God, I'm dying. First I thought, Oh my God, I'm dying. And then I said, the second thought I said was, um, yo, I'm going to die. I said, what the fuck? I just started boxing, man. I'm going to die. 
And then I kept asking him, why, why, why? But he wouldn't tell me. And then, um, this is sort of a lie, but I want to put this in anyway, just to tell people. Then I saw the light of Jesus Christ. I saw a white light that was, that was sort of like a fire. And then it spoke to me through, through, through experience and words and my feelings. It said, don't give up. You must fulfill your mission. That's all I heard Jesus Christ say. And after that right there, I started punching him in the head hard I could. And he started letting go a little bit. And I told him to hurt him a little bit. But I had no shooting at that. I wasn't really being strong for like five, over five minutes. So then what I do, is I, I literally feel fly or flight. Like, I'm literally in death's door at this point. I'm about to, I'm pretty much close to dying. Like, when I'm in the show for like the good two or three more minutes, I'm probably going to die. Or I'm going to knock out and be in real fucked up shape. Because I'm asthmatic. Because I'm asthmatic. Anyways, yeah. So I use all the strength I have to fly or flight. And I managed to get his arms both his arms off of my neck. I ain't give it to him completely off. Let's say, let's say, um, yeah, let's say, um, he had his hands like this on me. I listed it to the point where it was like that. Fuck, yeah, see this shit. So it went from like this with both his hands or whatever to like that. And I think when I did that, and then I also used ism, telling him, yo, bro, please don't kill me, bro. Don't kill me, man. I need to live, bro. I gotta live, bro. I got a lot to do in life, bro. I said, I'll give you money, drugs, whatever, crack, whatever. I don't care, bro. Let me live, bro, please. And then when I said that, he said, okay. And he let me go. He let go of the chokehold, right? So then from there, I'm putting it on the floor, deep the fuck out. And I'm asking the nigga, like, yo, why you did this, man? Why you hurt me, man? I got that fucked you up. I let you up like fucking three times. What the fuck? And then he didn't say anything. And then from there, he reached for my fucking phone, my $20 tablet, and I tried to fight him back. But pretty much I was so weak in the moment, and I was still fucking fucked up from the chokehold. He managed to take it from me and run away. Now here's, what I now, here's the really good, now, here's the best part of the story. The crazy shit is, is that I actually had a knife on me the whole time. But that I wasn't thinking about that. I wasn't thinking shit at all. So pretty much, once he, cho- once he had me in the chokehold for like two minutes, I, I, my, my, my mind was completely blank, and I was just breaking one this for like a good three, like two or three minutes straight before I started, before I thought the thought that, oh my God, I'm going to die. And then I said something like, oh my God, this is box. I'm going to die right now like this. And then from there, I heard Jesus or whatever. So yeah, what I could have done is I could have reached for my fucking knife, which was, was actually a good spot. Was actually in a good spot. And instead of pushing him in the face, I could have been stabbing him in the face. The point where I stabbed him a couple times in the face, and then he would let me go automatically. And then from there, I fucking OD on his shit. I stab him with both his fucking legs and his arms, and fucking blind him, and fucking give him his whole fire face, his whole smiley face, and then I fucking stab him in the middle of his, of his forehead, or whatever. And then fucking um. Take his thumbs away. Like, literally slice his thumbs off so that he can never smoke again. And he can never, what, well, yeah, he can never see again so that he can't stretch me out. Cause that's how I operate, guys. When I get the real street beef and shit, I'm not gonna tell you how many people I've done this to. Maybe I haven't done it at all. Maybe I've done it to 15. We'll say between 0 and 15. Maybe I did, well, maybe I did it as a mission for Blood Gang, even though I wasn't Blood Gang, but I was trying to join. So maybe I did it in that time. Or maybe it was during the last year when New Age Mafia, we actually had some beef. So I'm not gonna tell you that though. But pretty much, um, I feel all the same. What was I saying? Fuck it. I'm going to read you the plan now. This is Mafiaism in here, guys. Oh, right, let me use this. Oh, yeah. This is, what, this is the first thing I came on, God. That's my, my click. The Straw Hat Shinobi's, Shinobi's Ninja Pirates. Right? So this is, sort of, this is one of the things we jack. But in the day, we, we have two names we really jack for real. But I will never put those two names on YouTube at all. Cause that's only, that's like super classified and like mysterious. And you know, no one can know the name of my ma- mafia. Only the members can know the name. And they have to put in work first. Let me tell the name. But anyways, yeah. One, how to rob, how to rob cars. Four of us approach the car. I handle. For ten, five to ten cents, go down to one cent. They dub me or piss me off. By the time I'm dubbed, my drops are in front of the, the four tires, and we shoot the tires. Then, come on, wait. Then I pull out my Uzi, and they t- and tell the car people to get out of the car. I rob their wallet and plus phone. We we um I have any time. So I take their wallet. And, what the fuck? What happened? Okay, fuck. So I'm gonna do this quick. So I take their wallet and phone and I take their bank cards. I verify the pin and then after I get their pins, I verify the pin works and we kidnap the, the people and we go to two to five, two to, two to five, maybe really, really five to ten ATMs, take out each ATM, take out 500 from each ATM. Then we put them in a cab. Then after that, we, put, we give them about 30 or 40 dollars, put them in a cab and, and we keep, 